Okay, there we are. Hello chat. It's uh, my first time streaming and it's for 75 people if I read Twitch correctly, which is got them crazy. Um, I hope we are having a good time a day, uh, today, so yeah. Um, for those that don't know me, although probably most of you do, I am Torben Angriff, I am responsible for all this um, because I started a mod project way five years ago or something, which was the best and worst idea I probably ever had, but well, here we are. And today I'm bringing a guest with me on stream uh, who's gonna introduce himself now. Yes, yes, hello, I'm uh, Hieronymus. Um, some of you maybe also heard my name or read my name somewhere. Um, and I just am here to support Taube in this uh, amazing journey. Um, I jumped in on the project, well, really late, a couple of months ago, I think. Uh, and uh, yeah, I was amazed by what Taube already did and not only Taube, but other people also. So uh, I'm here today to make sure uh, you all behave in chat and uh, if Taube needs anything that uh, I'm here to support him. So uh, also, if you have any questions, I'll try to make sure I uh, I read them when Taube is uh, doing the actual gameplay. So uh, I'll make sure we see your question and uh, we will try to uh, to provide an answer to those amazing questions you probably all have. Yeah, really looking forward to them. Also, feel free to just ask questions in German. Well. The stream is going to be fully in English, but uh, yeah, we can translate the question on stream and then answer it. And if you really don't understand, then feel free to just write us on the modding Discord, which you can find like in my profile on Twitch. It's it's linked there. Uh, what you'll also find there um, is a list of everyone who, in some way, shape, or form, participated in this mod project. See. Um, it's not just me who did all this, although, well, the initial idea was mine and uh, of a friend, but the tree team has really grown over the years, and I think we are now at 15 people, um, not all at the same time, but I think that's the amount of people that contributed stuff to the mod. So yeah, uh, it's pretty nice to work in this large team. Uh, there's so many talented people on there, including Hieronymus, of course. Um, it's so fun to work with all of them and uh, yeah. We're gonna start the stream with a short introduction of what this mod actually is, uh, for those that just tune in to be curious, but we're gonna keep that brief. Um, what we'll also show is like how do we actually design stuff that is gonna end up in the game on your well on your computer in the end if you install it. Um, I have uh, a little documentation on two buildings that we did relatively recently, and we're also gonna talk a little bit about uh, how this whole thing started. Okay, um, I'd also say. Um, that we're gonna do the letter first, so just talking about the beginnings of the entire mod thing. Um, wait, where's the scene? There it is. See, I still need some time to adapt to OBS because I never actually used that before. Okay, um, what you are seeing here is uh, like a collection of images that I made in 2019. Uh, the whole thing just started out as like a new world clone with an algae culture that isn't really an algae culture. It's basically just a fishery that got the new paint job and the portrait from 2205. Um, yeah, some houses, a marketplace, really just the basics. And um, yeah, that, that was it. That was how the whole thing looked at first. That's how every ID starts. With yeah. Some, uh... Um, I directly gonna answer a question from chat, uh, which is when New Horizons is coming, is it cost free? Yes, it's gonna be. You don't have to pay any money. We are not doing paid mods because uh, I think that's a scam. Everything is, well, that, that's what you get. You don't have to pay, but uh, you've got to wait for five years for it. <laughs> that's kind of the trade-off. It's trade gonna be worth it. Yeah. 
I probably that's a good deal, but that's up to you to decide. Um, yeah, what you're seeing there is um, just a well, the, the the absolute basics. There was a time when we just started exploring what we could actually do with 1800. Like none of us knew the engine. Uh, none of us knew how anything worked and the game was brand new so we had to reverse engineer everything and find out how certain things were done like uh, how does Ubisoft actually generate a region which wasn't actually that easy to do uh, just cloning the whole process took I guess half a year but it was worth it we learned so much about the game and yeah to this day it's been really helpful because we basically have documented what the entire game is like from a technical standpoint. Yeah, Moving it was not on. just for, for this mod that you discovered a lot of things, that knowledge bubbled through to other people that then took that knowledge and make in making other amazing projects. So yeah. it's definitely not only in this mod that we can pick the fruits that you of your hard labor at the beginning of uh, New Horizons. Yeah, that, honestly, this mod has influenced modding development for 1800 so much. You don't really see it, but if you go through the mod browser on uh, Mod.io, which I can only recommend doing, um, stuff like the Mayabek mod that Taludus did, it was only possible because we found it out here for New Horizons, we documented it, and when Taludus came in modding, he was just coming to ask us, how do I do this? And, well, he also found out a lot of different things that you can do on top, but the basis work, the basic work for this, that was all New Horizons. Which is kind of interesting, because Maya Beck has been out for, I think, hardly a year? Am I right on this? I <laughs> uh, think it is, yeah, yeah, I think. It, it was, yeah. it was uh, made for the... Um... For the 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 the, con the contest, and I think the contest is no, it's it's less than it's less than a year. It's less than a year, because I think it was like in September of last year, I think. Yeah, yeah so almost ten a year. months. Let's say almost that's ten a year. months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I guess it was really nice uh, to see. But yeah, New Horizons was the thing that uh, actually started off all of things. Moving on, um, when we had all this figured out, we were making islands, and what you see there is the actual first island that was ever put into Asia. Uh, you see trees are missing, because we didn't know how to do trees back then. But the rest, what we just did was we took New World Islands, and then like uh, moved a few things around, and uh, applied our own custom textures to it. And we also tried to get it a little ambient. So what you can see there is um, me just experience, uh, experimenting with different ambient settings. If you come into the region, I want to give it a different feel than what other regions have. Um, to have an example here, if you take the old world and Cape Trelawney, you're going to be noticing that a lot of buildings really look kind of different. Like in the old world, it's... Uh, really tuned down, but in the Cape you're gonna have almost a Mediterranean feel to it. And that's ambient settings, because there's a color filter that just takes, gives a lot more warmth to the buildings in the Cape. And I did the same thing for Asia, but what I did was I took out all the red, reddish tones and I put, like I emphasized the green and blue ones, and you can see the experiments in that image over here and yeah that was how the region looked like i think at the start of 2020 um by the way while we're talking about the start of 2020 you can, might be able to thank COVID for this mod i'd never be able to do this without COVID and homeschooling being a thing because i was just stuck at home i had nothing to do and i really really enjoyed modding back then i had like 10 hour sessions a day it was a great time. Um, while we edit, this was the actual first buildings in the game that we put into Asia, which was a rice farm. And I was learning 3D art back then. What I did was I just adapted the 1701 building to 1800, 
It was like, I think an Asian house over there, which I just brought in. It's It has been replaced since, but I think the fields are still pretty much similar to it. And the agriculture on there is also, well, that stayed for pretty much until today with a few small tweaks. Uh, I think that was, I think summer of 2020 when we took that image. And I have one last to close it off. Um, that's from the start of 2021, uh, where we started building the NPC island. And we are gonna go into the game and we're gonna show you how it looks now. Um, well, later on the stream. But uh, this was just us experimenting with uh, island generation and uh, I actually island editing on an advanced scale. Like before I did all the island editing in a hex editor, for those that don't know what this is, you're basically replacing zeros and ones in, a, in the file. Um, but we, what we did was we wrote our own conversion tool slash editor for it, for Anno Islands. That was the extent that we're going to go to uh, just to get this mod done. Um, by the way, for those interested, you can download this tool free of charge on GitHub. I can leave a link there. Um, real quick. I already use it, for example. Uh, I think I I'm think most people one, do. but a, a, lot of, a lot of people uh, already experiment. Oh, well, some people experimented with uh, island conversions. I also have some projects in the pipeline uh, I want to use it for. Uh, Arctic, right? You yeah, have, correct, uh, correct. An Arctic New Arctic anywhere. region. So the because the Arctic doesn't have that much, that many islands, I want to reskin uh, all the islands to Arctic islands. So the Arctic has some uh, some more variety in uh, in islands. Yeah. That's definitely something I'm looking forward to. But uh, we all know when you release a big mod, there is a lot of aftercare, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I can only it's imagine. It's on, it's it's gonna be some time until I uh, I can work Definitely. further on that one. Definitely is. Um... So I also saw the a question in chat when the mod is going to be released. Um, I think it's a, gonna be a question that is gonna pop up often uh, during the stream, um, and we can we can only say it will be ready when it's ready, like we said for a couple of years already. Um, unless Toba now can make a big announcement, but I don't think no, so. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Um, um, so, that's it actually. There, that's the, well, one of the hassles you just have to deal with. When you're doing a free time project, your free time can go away really quickly and it has often done so, so, well. Um, but yeah, as I said, you're gonna get it for free, but you're gonna get it in like five years from 2020 or something. So you, yeah, you just you said wait. 2009. You said 2019, right? You started. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. Okay, we're 2024. So uh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. But well, you can. No, I mean we are 2024. State. Not not that you're going to release it in 2024. <laughs> we are 2024. <laughs> uh, it's been pretty much five years since I started this whole thing. Yeah. But to be honest, you may judge the state of completeness from the gameplay you're gonna see later on. Uh, actually, not so much later on, but uh, yeah. Speaking of the gameplay, before we do that, I have a few very interesting images about two buildings that we did. How we actually do create the, all the art content, because that's by far the most time-consuming thing. And to start off, I'm just gonna be putting in this image, which is just an image that we researched for a bathhouse. So back in, I think last year, we made the decision to replace the second tier public service with a bathhouse uh, where people can go and bath because that's like bathhouse culture is uh, pretty common in Japan. I think it's called an onsen, but it's named a bathhouse in game. And yeah, that's gonna be the new public service and of course we needed a graphics for that and what you see on screen right now is uh, an, a Japanese onsen which kind of served as an inspiration for the thing we did later on um, we also had uh, this image over here which is just a, well 
a water pipe that just yeah brings in water into a pool. Uh, that's also an onsen. Uh, there was uh, like JGE did uh, research a very cool site. He has like the most depth of sources I ever saw a person have. I can second that. Yeah. When you when you when you think you 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 make something, then JGE comes a uh, comes around and just posting those amazing resources, and you're like, okay, so now I have to revise what I made and make sure it's more in line with what JJ came up with. Yeah, so, uh, honestly. It's amazing. It's a really big help. A really Especially big help. in terms of buildings. He knows everything, yeah, basically. Exactly. And uh, he especially knows a lot when it comes to Asian buildings, um, which is super, super helpful. Because I don't. I am a German fella that is sitting in his apartment over here in Germany, and I've never been to either China, I've never been to Korea, I've never been to Japan. Not that I wouldn't want to, but everything I know, I know from the internet and having someone who's actually really proficient in that field um, of like Asian architecture and stuff, it's really helpful. So uh, not only is he doing all this research, but he also did the entire model and texturing work for the onsen, which you're gonna see in a minute. Um, this was just the images that he researched for it. And this is another one, how such a bathhouse can look. You see all these really, really nice rocks that uh, kind of put a border around the grass regions and separate water from grass. And a little pavilion uh, also, which sadly, sadly that pavilion didn't make the final cut, but it's still a great inspiration. I, I guess you're gonna see what we mean by that in a minute when we show the finished thing. 95 uh, people are now booking uh, oh my. <laughs> a trip to Japan uh, to <laughs> go to an onsen. Probably, probably. We're really good advertisement. Like, we should contact the government of Japan <laughs> and ask them if they want to sponsor us. <laughs> no. Uh, this is another image of how an onsen looks. Uh, it's really a dream. If I go to Japan, I need to go into one. It's really, really cool. Uh, yeah. So much for the concept art. This is just the stuff, the, the research phase where we just collect images together, which we later use as inspiration to create the whole thing. Um, what happens next is that uh, JGE made a mock-up of the thing, how he wanted to block it out, how everything should be scaled, how, where one building should go. And as you can see, there are residences next to it which are two tier two residences and they are just there for scaling just to get uh, a sense of how much scale the building is going to need because you want to have your bathhouse uh, be visible you want to have it be recognizable but it shouldn't be out of scale so if you go into ego perspective you shouldn't be going around and be like yeah that's uh, way too large and that's way too little um, I can remember that JGE and me had a really long discussion about this topic because he thought that the difference in height because between tier 1 and tier 2 was like uh, too much and he was right on this one but I never actually thought about it and it was really enlightening to just see that and see the difference because when he just sent me the edited tier 1 residences that went alongside the tier 2 residences it looked so much better. I just couldn't put the finger on it, what actually looked better, if I hadn't known what it was. Um, so anyway, after the mock-up, there is gonna be the modeling and texturing phase. Um, we also started at this point to like just a layout where the pools should go. So a, a bathhouse obviously needs pools for the people to swim in. And so we modeled the entire interior of the thing and made a ground vehicle first. Uh, this was just with the mock-up, I think. And yeah, when this was done, this is how the thing looked after some modeling and texturing. Uh, you can see uh, the foundation of the thing, uh, so we didn't have to terrain adapt. And what you can also see is that parts of the model are textured already but 
other parts aren't. And those are basically just left over from the mock-up, which are then replaced with the actual model that's gonna go there. And can we just appreciate how fucking awesome this thing looks? I was blown away when I saw that. And I think Hieronymus was too. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. can only say that when I make things, I just take existing buildings and just move some things around, take pieces of one building, put it together with a piece of, 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 of another building that is already in the game. But what, what you guys do is just a completely different level than what I can do. It's, it's just making something from scratch is like... And then seeing what you you, you, you came up with is, is just like... It, it's blowing me away time after time after time. And I can just say this is not the, this is not the end. If you see what the end result will be is just like... If I think from, okay, now it's finished, you guys came up, come up with, with another level of detail, another revision, another revision, yeah. just to make it so perfect. And I think that it's, that is just the reason why, why it's taking five years, because it's, it's, it's like such a precious project and you just want to do it right. You just want to do it with the details you want it to be. And that's, that's just so, so amazing. And I think. I, I appreciate the project even more when I got involved into it because then I saw how much work goes into making those buildings and, and making it so, so, so detailed. So uh, yeah. I, uh, if I had a hat on my head, I would have uh, just uh, put it off my head just to appreciate it because it's it's amazing, it really is. Yeah, that, it was like, uh, this was, I think, the second pass of the thing. And uh, as you can see, this was, I think, the third or fourth one where JJE just absolutely... Yeah, look at, look at that. That's L just, just look at if that. If you compare it with the previous image, it's like day and night difference. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. We also gonna have that on stream uh, later today when we reach the building on the Gongren tier. Um, we're gonna build it and we're gonna see it in action because what you can see there is like the whole propped up thing But what you can't see is that he actually put all the particles He put steam around there flowing water everything like the attention to detail like honestly It was so nice to see and also just be involved in the process of designing this we had long discussions on how do we want like the water pools to adapt to the terrain how do we do this how do we do that and i think that's really nice because we are basically doing collaborative art like one person is doing the model and doing the whole modeling texturing process and then the other person is giving feedback for that uh, what you could change um I think we can actually see that on the kiln really quick. Uh, so uh, that's another thing that JGE does way better than me, not only modeling. Uh, he also makes super detailed and imaginatory sketches of how what buildings could become. I can't do that. I don't have the imaginatory power for that. Um, yeah. Let's put aside the bathhouse then. Go to the kiln. Yeah, just go through to the kiln, I think, because uh, yeah. people probably want to see that also. And I think then... Yeah. I mean, we can gradually go over to gameplay. We can, we can. I mean, by now, I already told you the process. So we start off with researching how a porcelain kiln looked like. And you see Chinese porcelain, it wasn't made in like a huge oven. Well, it was, but the oven is very special. It's a very elongated oven alongside a ramp. And there's the chimney at the end. Uh, that's the process how they do uh, porcelain and the advantage of that is that you can have really really high heat and have that just go up through the entire kiln and really efficiently use all that heat to burn your raw porcelain. And for this particular building I found it really interesting uh, because I think you, you shared uh, at some stage you shared uh, a picture of it what you already had. And there was somebody saying, well, how, how weird is that looking? That's totally out of place. And and it was really interesting then to actually back up your, your model with actual images of real life um, information about this is actually how it's done. And it was really nice to, to, to be able to back those things up and, and, and show people the amount of work again that went into it. It's not just some random building that, that, that is made, but it's, it's actually thought of how it would look 
uh, how it should look. And I think especially also for this building, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention it because just by seeing this, I remember that comment and I was like, oh, right. Uh, yeah. yeah it, it was really, really fun to research all this, to be honest. Um, things you can keep in mind, the roofs, the general layout and the archway, because we you're going to see the finished result as well. Um, yeah, that, that's another perspective. I think it's the same building even. Um, yeah, you see, that's just how the oven looks like from the front. And this was the first thing I did. This was my mock-up. And you can see that's really rudimentary. Uh, you don't see the oven yet. You just see a few roofs. You just see some general scaling, how things might become, look like, for example, the chimney was changed later on, but that's just general layout of things, how I wanted it to look like in the first place. And yeah, when this was done, I got this thing back. This was JJ's sketch that he did. And uh, yeah, to be honest, a lot of that thing made its way into the final product. Like you see, he had the idea of making the stairway up uh, at the side and uh, how this all could just manifest itself. Um, yeah which was really interesting to see. And that's the kind of feedback you get when you do a project with him or, well, just collaborate with him on the art. It's really, really inspiring. And yeah, so I just started... Oh wait, we have two more images. Uh, this was an image from a side perspective, still the same building. There was a nice collection of uh, assets, of, of images, of photos taken from that specific building. So we just used that. Uh, as you can see that um, initially I wanted to have a wall there, but what they do is uh, they have stacked porcelain. Which uh, means that they replaced all the walls with stacked porcelain. And so that's what JGE recommended I do. And so I did that. Um, that was the sketch I got for this. And as you can see in the next picture, this is a more refined version where I just did modeling. The roof wasn't ready yet, but I think the side was. Uh, well, still not textured, just uh, general color scheme applied. Uh, we replaced init what initially should have become a wall with stacked porcelain. And I think it turned out very, very great. Uh, moving on. This was how the thing then looked when I brought it into the game. All without textures. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, it's just a model and it's all just painted white and the next step in 3D art is to texture the thing Which of course I did uh, This was the Texture for the bottom part. I taken the roof away so you can actually see what's going on there um, Because beneath that roof you can see a lot of details that you wouldn't really see from a bird's eye perspective, but that you can see when zooming in. And I was, it was really important to have that on uh, a building because it invites you to just zoom in, explore and see what we did. And it also makes things more believable. Um, yeah, um, then I also textured the roof and brought the thing back into Blender. This is how the thing looked in Blender then and uh, pretty much finished. JJE did a few texture tweaks at the end uh, to just elevate them to another level, which is something he does for most buildings because I can't do that. I don't know. How, uh, to this day, I don't know how he does that, but I'm impressed every single time. And this is how the thing looked in game. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the thing. The result of, uh, I think, a month of work, among other things. Um, but this was look it. At, look at that. That's just amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. I love the result. I love yeah, the result. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. So a question ca came in. We quickly can, can answer. Um, languages. Um, who was it? It was... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Mm. It was Logan uh, that, ask, that asked um, in which language the mod will be playable. Um, because he is uh, he's like French and he doesn't understand German, English. Um, 
as far as I saw, I think some languages are already included. Um, but maybe you can quickly tell I can, I can. Um, what process you will having for languages. See, most of the time for mods, uh, we have a really, really active and dedicated translator section on Discord. Um, people that just speak English and like their language as maybe mother tongue or as a second language, but really well. Um, they just come in and they offer to translate things. And I'll probably be going to them and say, hey, I've got a little bit of work for you. And by little bit, I mean a lot. It's really a lot. Uh, a lot of text that just need translations. But um, I think we have a coordinated effort in the community to make mods playable in like each language that the game offers, there, uh, at least for there, text. Yeah, there is now also a plugin from Nick, if I'm not mistaken, um, that translates the basic English version or German yes, version or whatever yes. to every available version. But that's, that's of course, uh, an auto-translated version. So native speakers will like be, nope, right. that's not what I want. So eventually native people will step up and probably translate it for the, for the community. So that's probably, uh, I guess, how it's, how it's going to go. Yeah. Um, I mean, machine translation is really helpful. It just uh, makes you, uh, it just saves a lot of work. Uh, a lot of the basics, but honestly, uh, th now that I see the Nick in chat, like Santo, he streamed the, the mod in like the German machine translation, and some things were uh, like really, uh, really, really interesting to see. Uh, I think there was um, like um, what what was it called? Like th there's a junk ship yet. For, so for those that don't know, a junk is a Chinese ship type. But uh, the auto translation tool, it didn't like say junk ship yet. Uh, garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, <laughs> basically translated it to garbage ship yet. <laughs> it's just pretty right. fun to see because the ship indeed is garbage. <laughs> but it wasn't and meant that way. <laughs> and now you're on the topic of ships. Uh, there is also a question about ships. If there will be new ships, so one new ship that is already in the game is the junk. Um, which we will maybe see later in the stream, or maybe not. Depends on how much time we have and what we can cover. I mean, um, but yeah. I mean, if we want to see junks today, then we sh probably should start playing, right? Uh, right. This right. is now what you've all come for. This is where we start gameplay. We are gonna go to Asia, guys. Right. And when you load up the safe, I'll quickly go through some other questions and try to oh there you are already okay i am <laughs> i am uh still no sound because i turned as it off quick as a great eastern with items i had the entire safe game preloaded to be honest entire time yeah uh first of all shout out to visa for playing the whole thing uh we have a little internal test session going on at the moment and he created the sa safe game for it uh, it's just some engineers to get you started, so we can just try out playing in Asia and don't have to do like the busy work beforehand. So we're gonna do exactly that. As you can see, everything is supplied. We also have the new world uh, with some rum, some coffee and some settlement on Manola. That's basically everything there is to it, but it's a huge time saver, so uh, thank you for doing this. Um, as you can see, um, I nuked the actor. She's only providing beer. So we're gonna have an eye on rum, which I hope will be steady because the nerf or the actor wasn't actually in the game when Wiesel put up the save game that came in during the test. Uh, and immediately going to ask the question of Anofan if there will be two versions, a version with or without uh, changed items, you will be able to uh, to cut that part out. So yes, that's that. So no worries, you will be able to play without the item changes. That's the nice thing about mods. Uh, you can configure the game the way you want it to, not the way the devs want you to, which I kind of can understand from a dev perspective because uh, at least I think that items are super overpowered and break the game. 
but if you think differently that's okay and if you want to play differently then that's your choice and uh, I want, don't want to take that choice away from you especially when I just profit from an environment that's basically the epitome of having a choice on how to play a game. So uh, long story short we'll just upgrade. There they are that's investors and uh... and going to investors just to be clear is the trigger to actually start your journey to asia yes it is you see we already have uh, a steam shipyard that's building uh, ships for us uh, two cargo ships in queue we're gonna need those we really gonna need those um He's coming up with an expedition, right? Should be. Yeah. There, there we go. So, currently, the way it is, you just get this newspaper article. Skip the small talk. Too much going on today. And then you're gonna be invited by a new NPC, which is James Goodwill. Uh, he just invites us to... Well, go to the eastern border regions. I didn't specifically name drop Asia in this, but uh, it's called Eastern Atoll in game. It should be pretty clear what it is. Uh, we can just go in the world map. And as you can see, you can do much more zoom around. And over here, you have a new session, which is Eastern Atoll, which you can enter. So we enter. So it's different compared to other regions where you have to do an expedition or something. What and now I'm going to shut up right so we can enjoy the intro. Steadfast leader. And you can help us convey that message. You could make some real money trading in this volatile market. No matter where one helps, there you are. Don't hear it. Don't oh, no. disappoint us. Don't do you have game sound uh, on? I do have it. Yes. Oh, right, yeah. I'm muted the stream, of course. <laughs> there we are. This will have an immense effect on your market value. We're getting provided with a starting ship by this guy over here. Uh, this is Goodwill's Island, uh, which is pretty much finished for now. You saw it in the card scene already. Uh, he has a little storage ship where he will be offering some goods. He isn't currently. Um, yeah, it's it's just your it's a smuggler hideout as you could read in the mu newspaper article. Uh, his assets got kinda nuked by the queen. Uh, so he's there incognito and against any uh, law, but he's still there and he's basically controlling you that sector. The moment, if you have need. Yeah, he that. provides items once you uh, settle an island. Right, he does. So uh, he's the one that actually brings us to Asia. Um, I'm gonna just quickly accept the cargo ship and sail to this island over here, which I want to be settling on at first. Um, so all of this, all are you of this sure you guy, want to take that island? I am, I am. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I know what's gonna happen, I know what I need, <laughs> and I'm gonna be taking this island. Um, it's not very nice to have this one. Um, everything you see, it kind of has uh, a little historical touch, not accurate, but a touch of it to it. Uh, so what happened in the 19th century in Asia was basically the Western powers just sailed there and said trade or else. Uh, they waged a few wars around the region and they basically forced a totally underdeveloped part of the world to do like they said. And we kind of represented this uh, with two NPCs. Uh, first of all, this guy, he's the Western perspective. Um, he's just a... Well, let's call him shady businessman, and <laughs> that's probably not evil of a term enough. Um, I mean, he seems kind of cold, he's just a trader, he's just doing good business, but if you read between the lines, you will see that this guy um, 
have I enabled swearing on stream? Well, you you can think. You can think. You already, what you want. You already <laughs> did it. So it's okay. You, you already know <laughs> what how this guy's like. Let's say he's not the nicest person and um if you ask him whether he cares about the lives of the ordinary Asian person, absolutely not. Um the other person, we also saw him in a cutscene. He's currently There's residing over here. Um, he's an admiral of the Asian Empire, of the Eastern Empire. Uh, his island isn't remotely finished yet, so I'm gonna keep this brief. But uh, the reason why he's there is because we are in the border region and he desperately tries to keep everything together. Um, yeah. To pretty limited success. Let's call it that. So, uh, the thing is he can't wage war on you because... The Eastern Empire just lost the last one. We are, I think, setting-wise after the Second Opium War, so around the 1870s. Um, yeah, and it wasn't really a good time for the Chinese Empire back then. It, there's a reason why the Chinese call that century the century of humiliation. And in typical Anno fashion, we wanted to show that, but not too much on the nose. See. We still want to give you the option to just have uh, a nice looking and uh, good feeling for the region. But I think it's a topic that just needs to be addressed if we are doing Asia in that time. So, starting off, we're gonna build a contour over here and start building our first settlement. As you might see, uh, he is not too happy that we are settling here. Um, first moves are really straightforward. We just start off with uh, a few houses, a few first people in our first settlement, and we are gonna be producing timber as our first building material. Uh, let's put up some sawmills real quick. Oh, Santo the Admiral isn't happy because we just settled in his lands and uh, to put it mildly, we shouldn't be there. But well, we, well, the Western Empire had uh, the better fleet, so the Admiral doesn't have to decide that. Um, can we do this? And don't we criticize Torbus' way of building. Yeah. Um, Everybody builds differently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to move <laughs> alongside the coast over here so I can expand my settlement a bit further down. Uh, I see there's a question in chat which, which is really interesting. Uh, the Japanese and Chinese inspirations you've taken are really cool. Have you also been inspired by other East Asian cultures like Korea? And I think we can say yes to that. Um, not in the same to the same extent. Uh, I think it's 60, 40 or 70, 30 Japanese, Chinese. Uh, that's like the two main cultures that we have in here. Um, the main part is Japanese, so you see they have sushi that they want and they want to drink Yumeishu, but there's also gonna be silk fabric later on, which is kind of really a Chinese good and also porcelain. So there's gonna be Chinese and Japanese goods uh, it's all the mishmash over Southeast Asia. Um, I think Korea and Vietnam, and Ch they, they are all represented later on in the street food, which we are going to check out today, um, where we basically took local cuisine of different regions and merged them all together in one, one big feature. Um, Maybe it's time to, to zoom in on some of the houses to show off those amazing models. Uh, I mean, they are not too amazing. They are basically just uh, Jornalero houses from the Hacienda with uh, a green roof texture on it and some Asian walls. But it really gets the job done, I think. And somebody asked uh, in chat if you will be able to walk through them in third person mode. Yes, you can. Um, so it's just like a regular NO session. You can just walk Hello there. through everything. I am in first person mode. Uh, by the way, here you see one of the things that isn't done yet. You see everyone down here is just uh, South American. There are a few Chinese people which we ported over from the Asian pack. 
from the Dragon Garden, but that's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, every feedback unit you see is gonna be replaced with Asian people. Uh, can be sure of that. And... While I've been moving around... Why? We have 50 tons of timber now. While I've been moving around. Can you imagine? It was it was all why I, I asked. Just to... Right. This is uh, this is the marketplace. You've been uh, a fool in my son. Oh, we can't build it yet. But it's in the right click menu. Unfortunate. Uh, this is the marketplace. Which is pretty much done. Except for the feedback unit. Uh, it looked different like half a year ago. And then someone on the team just said. Hey, we need a new marketplace. Created this amazing model. And I think we can also switch to a tier 2 version of this, which is a little bit higher, which fits better in like a larger city. But yeah, let's keep it to tier 1 for now. Okay, so let's produce some sushi. Um, where do we do that? I think we should go over here. Just make up a huge street, which can then go down here and we have our first warehouse something and i encountered when i was like experiencing the first uh, time in the atoll is like the trees are really making it hard to actually see what you're doing if you're uh, trying to build something when you all uh, will try the mod when it's ready you will definitely Gonna remember what I said now because it's 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 really really it's hard to. Yeah, you can you can destroy all the trees, but that's so. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> remember just jacks did. are gonna hate you now. <laughs> uh, yeah, they can, they can. Uh, I think in the old German Anno community we had a saying that went like uh, "freedom for the grass" or something, <laughs> uh, which really. <laughs> That was accurate. You had to say that when you were demolishing entire region of trees. Um, Lady Haha -ha hates to destroy all trees. Well, I love it because, like Hieronymus said, overview. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put on two more rice farms over here. So if you look at sushi, you need rice, algae and sturgeon. Yes, you do. And all of this is combined in a cookhouse, which has a recipe book, because we can also manufacture different things there. You can manufacture either sushi or caviar, and there was gonna be a third good as well. Uh, if you go in here, uh, they are those images are AI generated. I think they get the job done. Um, so the sushi re recipe is like rice, sturgeon, fish, and algae, and you just combine that everything into this in this cook house over here and because it is so nice we're just gonna build a second one um, can you show the world map again and the question is will we still have crown falls on the map um, yeah you do you see there's the sunken treasures expedition which was never done in that safe because frankly said it's pretty useless if we just want a starting base in the old world so the mod is just building on top of what we already have. Uh, so everything that is in the base game is available if you play with yes. this mod. Absolutely. Um, what we don't have on this island is hu humor fertility. Well, that's why I asked you, are you sure you want to <laughs> settle on that island? <laughs> yes, And you I'm were sure. sure, so I was like, okay. I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, see, if we went for another island, like this one, this one has Yume as, uh, well, a first good, and that's intentional, because Yume is needed for the first lifestyle good, uh, luxury good, sorry, um, but pepper fertility for peppercorns is needed for the old world, so by choosing your start island, you can already, like, decide in which direction do you want to go, do you want to quickly just uh, set up a settlement that gives you pepper, which is the first ne good you need from the region. Uh, we can just build a few farms of this, we don't know when we're gonna need it, but I guess we will. Um, sh should we go like this? We can, we should. Um, Next one. Now we just have two pe pe pepper farms uh, going strong. Well, 
I think they are just a uh, retextured bell pepper farm from the old world, but there was a little Asian touch to it. Uh, see, for all these amazing buildings that we do from scratch, we also have like adapted buildings. Uh, which is really cool because it saves a lot of time, but I don't think they look too good. Uh, well, they look fine, honestly, but they don't You're look too hard Asian. on yourself. I'm they always. Look amazing. I'm always. But you need to be. Uh, there is a nice need... balance of, of, of new buildings and, and reskin buildings, and that's totally fine. What we also need is a fire station down here, which is also new. This is the Asian version. It's built on top of the old world one, but it has the new tower. Um, yeah. And let's also put a fire station into our city. Right. Um, moving on. We can't produce Omishu on here, and I don't even want to because I don't feel like we need like, they can be unhappy. Um, what you need to do is you basically have a Yume farm, and I can just build the building real quick so you see how it looks like. Uh, you can build it. a bit more residences and then build a temple? Yes, that's what we're gonna do next. Uh, NT. NT. Um, yeah. This is the Yume factory. Uh, it's basically just an oversized distillery. It's just schnapps equivalent for Asia, for the Eastern Atoll. But we don't need that, so go away. Get off my screen. What we do need, though, is tea. We're gonna quickly build a new warehouse. We're gonna build this. And the second one. And we're gonna build um, two farms at first. And they need a lot of fields. 168. Uh, and that's something you may see the new world is already pretty uh, let's say harsh when it comes to field counts I think this region might even be harsher you need so much tea you're gonna need tea for as an export good later on uh, but honestly if you're not able to do that because you run into space issues, you might be pleased to hear that you could also just use uh, the tea from Jacob's collection to replace it. Because what we did during last half a year was mod compatibility, so we kind of shared some goods. So now you can have the choice, if you have Jacob's collection you can import the tea, if you have New Horizons you can produce it, and if you have both mods you can do both ways and choose which one you want to go. Um, I think we need more residents now. Yeah, uh, because you have a shortage of workforce. I, I do, I do. Um, should we build, build something nice now? Let's build it like this. We can fill up with a few ornaments in the meantime. Well, not now, you but say later. Ornaments, I you say ornaments, Nova? I did say ornaments. Ornaments? Do you, for those of you who know who Weasel is, you're gonna <laughs> be uh, not surprised that he never actually built something beautiful. Uh, like the whole, he was really happy about the ornaments tab because then all the ornaments were away from his screen because he didn't have them in his construction unit anymore. But uh, yeah, we do have a thing in this mod. Which made him go for the beauty building way. I'm gonna say as much, you're gonna see it when we arrive at the late Gongren stage today. Which we will definitely do. I'm not cutting the stream anywhere before that. Um, two questions. Does the Bright Harvest DLC work in Asia? Yes it does, if you have it. Uh, you will just unlock tractors at Gongren, I think. Uh, yes, it's even here in the UI. You see there's a tractor barn which we could build. Uh, same even goes for the fertilizer silo yep. uh, that would appear if you have it. Yep. Second question, you just wanted to ask about the Jacob thing. Yes, you may ask anything you want about the Jacob thing. Oh, Wiesel is unhappy because I said he never builds anything beautiful. <laughs> no, I, I don't meant it that way. You build something beautiful. It's just that beauty is sometimes subjective. And I don't think... Well... Large rows of super efficient houses. I love them. I think that's beautiful, but most people don't. Uh, but what you did was uh, you you built you you have built beautiful in a way that other people would even call beautiful. 
the type of people that does not play in an Excel sheet. There uh, are some other uh, some other questions. For example, Corbos asks uh, about an icon on the farms. Well, Corbos, uh, we will be addressing that. I think in a couple of minutes, or depending on how fast the time goes, because we have a, a special mechanic in uh, in the Eastern <laughs> Atoll that uh, is influencing farms, and uh, that we will address when it uh, yeah. when it happens. <laughs> Honestly, we which is gonna be in yeah. Th go 30, ahead, 30 minutes. We have thirty minutes. Then you're thirty gonna minutes. See. Okay. Then we're gonna make no no no. Don't, don't. We're not gonna talk about it yet. We're just gonna have some suspense. Yes, we Building will. Building up to the uh, 30 minutes. So We're at double speed, so 50 minutes. Um. Yes, yes. Another what I think... question was if... Uh, what was it? What was it? Um, some of the surf looks buggy going the wrong way. That gonna change. Not sure what you mean by that, DL Moridden. Some of the surf looks buggy going the wrong way. I don't even know what this means. So if you can elaborate a bit, a bit on that, we can uh, address the question. Elaborate a bit. That's <laughs> a, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I find this so funny? Okay, um, what I've built up here is uh, your equivalent to bricks in this world. Uh, it's at first here already, because there's going to be another construction material. Um, it's clay plaster. Which is uh, the way you build houses in Japan. It's a Japanese building technique. Also mostly used in Korea and China. So if you go to Asia, most things are somehow shared or share the same kind of basic pattern. Um, what they do is they have like, they, are, they build a framework from wood. Then they fill up that framework with bamboo. And then they take clay and like plaster the bamboo in place and that's how they make a wall. And to be honest, this is pretty hard to bring down into a proper production chain. So we just basically said, okay, you know what? It's gonna be just clay plaster sets that we produce over here. I wanted to have it in there and I think it's very fitting. To, well, if you were really strict with it, it's not the way you do it in reality, but well, you got it sometimes just adapt to NO standards. Yeah, it's just your typical bricks. What it needs is uh, a clay pit and on top, of course, a bamboo forestry to pl yeah, produce some bamboo. Um, the surf, the white parts of the wave as they come into the shore. Ah, I know what you mean. Uh, that's a vanilla bug, honestly. See... What happens over here is um, they have a wave that's going this way but all the foam is moving behind the wave and that's why it kind of looks a little off but if we go to the old world you're gonna see the same thing. See? Wave is moving but the foam is behind the wave. Okay. We're gonna go back. To here. Spare your hypocritical outrage. He's absolutely unhappy. Let's change that. Uh, what we're gonna do is we'll take away those three. And we're gonna build a temple over here. Which is this thing. And we can't yet because we don't have clay plaster. I shouldn't have deleted all those trees, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to answer Lady Haha question can i activate the mod for an existing save game yes you can um do take into account that some balance changes are you made for example if you play trust. with the changed items um you can fall back into not having enough workforce for certain production chains because the workforce items are also changed and some items don't give the additional output also so if you do that Use it in an existing save game. Uh, take into account that you will have to do some, some or redo some production chains. Make sure you 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 build more population and stuff like that because it balances uh, a bit different than uh, than vanilla. But it is possible to to add it to an existing save game. We have a problem. People are rioting. I don't want them to riot. <laughs> I need a police station. 
Um, while we're waiting for the clay plaster, will there be new soundtrack in Asia? I wish there would be. Um, even if we manage to get something produced, which would be a possibility. You can't really add that into the game. There's a technical issue with this, which is really hard to solve, and it would basically involve just redoing the entire music for the entire game. Possible, but... Is it worth it? If you want Asian music, you can also put a YouTube playlist on. Uh, what we did was we put in the music from the Arctic, because I think it fits the mood, kind of. Um, yeah. That's just how things are. Sometimes you gotta deal with that limitation and just say, yeah, we could, but it's not worth it because it's really hard to do. Okay. I don't trust you. I don't either. Um, while this guy is producing clay plus, uh, by the way, we can build up a second chain for this. Do we have? We, we do. So let's use that. And also... We're gonna do this to get a hold of the mine. Um, what do we do? We build another bamboo forester over here. And build those two. Like and maybe here. use a tree painter just to give it already some, uh, some trees. Ah, yeah, we can. Cheat code unlocked. Yeah. I didn't think of this back then. Over here. I spoiled the ornament section. <laughs> I did. Well... Now you saw it, you're gonna be seeing it later <laughs> again. <laughs> um, setting aside you, Mishu, uh, you're gonna be producing clothes as a third good in this region. And as you might see, this just looks like a poncho weaver, which is right, because that is a poncho weaver. We are currently in the process of redoing the production chain a little bit. So we recently introduced linen as an intermediate good. Uh, so the production chain goes now goes hemp, linen, and then you make you buy clothing out of it. There's gonna be more changes to that, more on that like in the next half a year. You're gonna be seeing the result of all it, but for now it looks like this. Uh, you need to produce hemp, which is also shared with uh, Jacob. And um, yeah, Maxter asked that question at just the right time. Yes, there's gonna be compatibility with Jacob's collection. You can produce hemp, if you have both mods, you can produce hemp like in Asia, you can also produce it in the old world. Uh, just like you can use import tea or produce tea like ex interchangeably. Uh, it's the same good. It's the same good. Um, yeah. So let's go on, produce a little bit of hemp over here, 20 minutes. Um, we need to do this. Go around here. Have another farm. And then let's just build. Do we build another linen? Yes, we do. Uh, we can also do that here. So as you can see, uh, the new buildings, like the late tier buildings, they already need clay plaster as a production, uh, as a construction material. Uh, so you you definitely need to build this first. Uh, the first tier is kind of large, but honestly, that's what you get if you, well, do a region with only two tiers. Because in the end, if you have two tiers and they are very large. It's better than doing three tiers, but because for a population tier you need to be doing residences, you need to be doing public services, and if we had a third tier on top, like three small tiers, it would have meant more work on the cities. And to be honest, the way the mod was like in concept phase, colony regions always had two tiers, so we wanted to stick with that. If someone wants one day to do a tier three, sure, go for it. You tricked me. I can only recommend it that someone does it. I don't think it's gonna be me, honestly. Um, what do we have here? Let's quickly go into the production screen and see how everything goes. Uh, tea is fine. Uh, sushi is very fine. Jumei clothing is also very fine. Yumeisho isn't fine, but we don't care. Let's just build another tea. 
workshop over here. Because the production ratio here is you need two farms and three end buildings. We can just freely do that. Um, pepper is full, tea is probably also full, hemp isn't, hemp isn't full. I'm gonna be building another hemp farm even if we don't, don't seem to need one already. But I want our storage to keep up for like unknown reasons. Um, Don't waste your time. I can see right through you. They are all super unhappy. We need to be building the temple real quick. There we go. Now they shouldn't be as want? unhappy anymore. Yeah. This is how the temple looks. Um Yeah. There's no specified religion on this thing. What you see is like a Shinto gate. Uh, you see a lot of religious symbols. Um, it's kind of a mix and match. I hope nobody is offended of that, but uh, honestly, if you are, then I guess you're offended by it. It's just about putting together like different religious aspects into one building, and you can imagine it as whatever you like to. Uh, this is the reason why it's called temple and not like Shinto temple or Taoist temple. Did something. Yeah, something. And in happened. the end, merging it all together well, is like paying respect to everything. So, right. It's better to to do it like that, I think, than to just pick one. Yeah. Uh, same goes like for production chains. Uh, like the thing over here, it's named Jim by clothing, but clothing made from hemp fabric, it's super common in all over Asia. It's just that Jim by is the representative of this kind of sort of good uh, if we go for example for tea wait I have tea houses down here uh, some of you who've been playing Anno for a long time might recognize this building to a degree it's based on the Chinese tea house from Anno 1701 and I tried to like uh, made a make a creative reinterpretation of how a thing how this thing could look like in Anno 1800 style this is the result um, yeah, so the representative for tea is of course Chinese, but then the representative of uh, Jinbai clothing is uh, Japanese and, well, sushi to, is also Japanese uh, to a degree because that's just a tortilla factory where we slapped an Asian roof on it, but the roof is according to, I think, Japanese standards. JJE had an entire post on this, how different countries handle the roofs. Um, oh, sorry. I hit my mic there. That's not good. But, well, that's just how things are. Um, the fire is out of control. What nice things to hear. Maybe an, uh, another fire station would not be a bad idea, I think. <laughs> I think so, either. Uh, we need to expand a little bit before we upgrade, but we're really close to upgrading, actually. What? Um, while we add it, we can already blueprint this. Where's the place this population spends their free time or make fun? What do you need that for? They don't have free time and they don't make fun. Uh, they are farms, if you want. We to. already mentioned the bathhouse. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the bathhouse is 42. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. No. Um, honestly, there, there's Temple and there's Yumeshu, and I don't think the, those people do a whole lot different, a whole lot more than this. Um, basically, if you wanted to have like a luxury place uh, where people could just go, then sure, you could. Um, Problem is, if you design like a population tier like this, I'm not thinking like, okay, I want to have sushi in there, I want to have Jimba in there, I want to have tea in there. I think about, okay, this one needs a building, this one needs food, drink, and something they can possess. And in 1800, it's also that uh, the first luck happiness need is always an alcohol, and the second one is already also a building. So I have these spots to fill. 
so I fill them up. And Jinbai, for example, if it were to be replaced, which it probably will be, it would still be clothing, like a product from a clothing category. Uh, I remember at some point in development, I think there was like a, what do a you karate want? thing or something, or like a, a, a martial art uh, thing, I think, was at some yes. point in the development, yes. I think. But that was then redone, and it's now a temple, I think. That's the I bathhouse now. The... Oh, the bathhouse, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Um, our... What are warehouse. those buildings with the green eye? Like a green harp? Do you mean the temple, uh, Commander Jack? Ah, like he, the... he means the sanctuaries. Those things. Oh, right, right. Yeah. I don't okay. know. As you know, Ask the, the sanctuary roofs were once <laughs> covered with pure gold. And so shall they be again. Well, sanctuary what roofs. are you waiting for? There he is. Uh, these are sanctuaries, which you can rebuild. Um, we're gonna do so in... Like when we have Gongren like done, uh, well not, not entirely done, but uh, when we are well into Gongren, they're gonna need some time, but uh, the reconstruction will be very nice. So let's get started with upgrading to Gongren then. Uh, let's take these two. There we go. This is our second tier, uh, which is more of the worker class. Like, a more elevated worker class, uh, which kind of enjoys a few luxuries of the rapidly industrializing society of, uh, like, end of 19th century China and Japan. Uh, as you might see, like, in the last test that we had in December, this corner variation wasn't there yet. It was just a mock-up. Now it's finished. Um... And we also, do we have it here? Yeah, we do. Uh, we have like variations of a variation. Like this is one corner variation, where you see a table down here, you see a tree, and you see a very different roof. But then you look at this, they are both pretty much the same model, and the variation was made from the finished first model. So, yeah. Just to give the city some variety, I think they now have six variations for straight to corners. Uh, and I think it really turned out great. Uh, it needs to be have the potential to what is it carry about? a cityscape. Because houses are frankly the thing you're gonna build most in the city. Uh, let's go there, let's go there. Okay. Um. Now, with the first Gongren done, how much time do we have? 11 minutes still. Oh my god, I've gonna go f too straight, like, fast forward. Um, we can now have a quarry to give us some natural stone. Which maybe is the maybe we, we recapitulate everything from the Nongmen? Oh, that's a just good to, idea. This is a good just idea. to give an overview of people maybe just joining. Uh, it doesn't have to be really long, but just an overview of everything we already did. Yeah, we can, we can. Um, so, what have we done? We arrived here on the island and built some wood. We built up a city Welcome. consisting of those Nongmans. I'm glad to see a new uh, face around. They need a market, sushi, tea, and Jinbai clothing. Production for which is over here. Um, let's go through really quickly. You have sushi, which is rice, algae, and a new type of fish, which gets combined in a cookhouse over here into sushi. Um, you need rice farms, of course, which you can see here. The rice is just going, growing on the fields. Um, what's also there is a tea workshop, which needs a uh, tea of this farm and over here we have clothing production which is hemp that's processed into linen that you can freely use like anywhere you need linen for and a gym by weavery which yeah it processes linen and it gives you gym clothing um 
a question from chat and this is a really nice question because I've got the creator of that mod with me. Will this be compatible with the military attention mod? Yes, of course it's gonna be. And I want to maybe say even more, I'm not promising it, but I, I'm thinking about actually adding a uh, soldier's tier also in the Eastern Atoll. So it's an idea I have, it's not a certainty, but it is an idea I have to actually bring soldiers also to this, uh, to this region. I know, that's great, that's great. Um, yeah, so... Maybe with Samurai Twist or something, I don't know. Oh my, oh my, if they need katanas, I'm all for exactly. it. They exactly. need katanas, this is a good... Oh my god, I'm dreaming already. Uh, oh, th this would be so nice. This would be so super nice. Um, while we are at it, do we want to quickly go around the island of this person over here real quick? Like, just show a few things, because uh, you might see that uh, there have some... Some icons have appeared above those storages. Which uh, means that they are locked now. And you can see that he's a storage for weapons. One for valuables, drugs, luxuries, and for alcohol. And what you can do... Um, I'm gonna quickly click on this building here. Which is kind of unfinished, but uh, well, whatever. Uh, you have a trading contract with him. You can basically just bring him pretty much anything there is in the game, uh, like alcohol for alcohol. Anything alcohol will do. You can deliver schnapps or cognac, for example. Like luxuries, everything luxury does. Weapons, also anything that can well, th anything that goes boom does really. Uh, like dynamites, even steam motors. Um, yeah, you can just bring stuff to him and he's gonna be storing it in those warehouses. And what happens when you have them full will be for later. Uh, might, we might come to the point where we show that off, but I don't promise anything can explore a little detail, like over here he has parked an airship uh, for last minute evacuation. If he ever needs to leave, then he will leave definitely. Um, I, I Makes think... me like think about those movies where the villain always has like a submarine to escape in <laughs> or a balloon or a whatever. Right. Um, you see, the inspiration for this um, was actually Star Wars Episode 9. Like, okay. think of that movie what you will. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. But it kind of looked pretty good how they parked the 10 to 4 in that cave. And I absolutely love the Battlefront 2 map. And so I wanted to emulate this. This is why an airship is parked like in a cave over here. Like, random ideas. This is like the creative process. I sit in front of my computer and be like, yeah, I want to have this from Star Wars, but with an Anno touch and like I want to have an airship in there. And then I go into Blender and like orient all these rocks to be, uh, yeah, to be a cave. And then I put the airship over here. Uh, dear Moridan, there's a ninth Star Wars movie. I thought they gave up after Episode Seven flop. I wish they had, but sadly they didn't give up. Um, yeah, what you see over here is uh, ships that are being dismantled. There aren't any workers yet. They are still gonna be added. Uh, but this is leftovers from the Eastern Trade Agency fleet that they kind of th they kind of needed to like scrap them for spare parts. Uh, same as they beached that monitor, they needed to beach it because it was just super broken. But the only thing that wasn't broken was the turret, so they are going to use it as a stationary cannon. Um, I don't know how I got this idea, but I think it was nice. Um, yeah, so I put it there. Um, if, you, if you take that angle, you might be able to see some inspiration from Port Rail from Pirates of the Caribbean in it. In it. Um, this was at least the movie that I watched while doing that pier. Um, yeah. That's how I get ideas. I basically just consume whatever piece of media I want. Uh, 
I have, uh, first of all, JJE's pictures that he always sends, I love to look at them and just get inspired by them. But also, like, movies. And this could be anything. Like, what I said, Star Wars Episode Nine. it was Pirates of the Caribbean for this. And, oh. I think we need to interrupt the talk about, um, well, inspirations. Right. Because... I was just about to, to answer some questions, but there are much more important things that we have to look after. We'll take the questions from, uh, from, from after the... Yeah. Because um, the farm closed. Tauber, what does that mean? What does it mean? Yeah. Um, to put it mildly, our farms just stopped working. And they do so for the next 30 minutes. Um, what we have in Asia is seasons. You have repetitive seasons. Uh, you start with a dry season where you can harvest. And then you have a monsoon season where you just can't do anything in terms of farms. See, the farm has just stopped. It isn't producing anything for the next 30 minutes. Which means we have 73 tons of rice in storage. And that's what we will have for the next 30 minutes. So, if that isn't enough, then guess what? Our production will die down, our people will get unhappy. We are going to have to overproduce. And thankfully, which we'll see, we have a buff that is hidden there. So during like a dry season, your farm has automatic overproduction. Uh, 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 um which then goes into the storage. You just basically have at first to provide the storage capacity to just store all that excess goods. Uh, that's the deal. Uh, also Lady Haha asked, is there an option to turn it off? No, because it's integral to the region. I don't think it's really that hard to play with once you understood how to do it. Um, you just need storage space on the island and the rest will be done by the farms for you. Uh, do you know if this mechanic will be shared to make a mod for other sessions? No, you, there won't be a possibility to make this for other sessions. Technical reasons would be... I think that would be too far to answer right now. Uh, but it's only possible because we have our own session as a testbed. As, well, as a big playground there where we can do what we want in. Where we don't have to respect compatibility with other mods. Uh, yeah. So, this goes for any farm. Uh, tea isn't producing anything, rice isn't producing anything, hemp isn't producing anything. Um, what we are gonna do though is uh, we're gonna expand our storage for the next dry season already now. And what you have are these neat little storages. Which, yeah, you, you just build them. And then you get storage capacity for Asian crops, which means rice tea, pepper, basically anything that, uh, yeah, anything that you need to store, you can store in that warehouse. Your task is just to provide enough of them. And to be clear, those are um, um, goods that are produced in uh, the Asia region. Yes. So if you have other crops like sugarcane or something, that storage is not increased. It's only the storage that is in Asia. Yes, right. Um, so, well, with farms off the table for the next half an hour, we're gonna put it too fast forward and really just... We can, we can answer some questions, I think. I have a, a list of uh, some small questions. That's good, uh, that's here. good. Um, the question is, will there be a recording of today's stream? Well, uh, Tobe, you said you will. You will uh, keep it so people can watch it afterwards. Yeah, for that's a gonna be... The Twitch VOD, and I'm gonna also upload this. Okay. Okay. Um, will it integrate with tourism seasons, cafe, restaurants, bar in the old world? Maybe new recipes? Well, I we can partially, or maybe it's it's a good uh, a good time now to show off a part of that, Tobe. Maybe the street food. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, um, I thought it was about integration with tourist season and stuff. Yeah, but new recipes, question mark? Yeah, so they yeah, probably yeah. Probably we can use that as a, a pick-up point. That, that's good, that's good. Uh, just to be clear, in terms of tourists, there isn't really anything new. 
what's there is uh, there's gonna be new buffs for the department stores from High Life, so they work with. Uh, well, let, let's say the other part of the mod, which we don't get to see as much today. Um, what happens in Eastern Atoll is uh, every time there's rainy season, you can't really do much. You're just gonna have to build for storage, which is especially not so cool for build up phase. Uh, but it's meant to be indeed. that way because in that time you're uh, pretty much forced or encouraged to go back to the old world and, well, just keep on building up your investors instead. In the one hour that you had uh, in the dry season, you probably had built up a lot in Asia already, but now that you're in the monsoon season and can't really produce any farm goods, especially not new ones, you can go back to the old world and focus on your investor population again, which is what we will be doing. Uh, we have two, uh, two ships over here. We're gonna build a pier, get ourselves some construction material. And now this, is, this is the oil harbor. What the hell is happening here, Ubisoft, please? There we go. Ah! That's not what's happening. This was an oil pier. I still have that mod active. Which I desperately don't want. There! there that's, that's better. See, this is why we are playing a preview version. Uh, we need three of those, two of those, one of those. No, we, we need four of those. Uh, let's go to this island down here and build a few uh, grape farms. And while the ship is moving, we can expand our glass a little bit. Um, there it is. Is that good? I think it is. Um, I'll answer some questions uh, in the meantime. Um, does the AI understand how to expand to this region and utilize the buildings and whatnot? Um, it does not understand seasons, but honestly, the AI cheats anyway, so it always will have a full storage. Um, and but they do build the new buildings and yes. they do build the new residences and stuff. They like can. That, yeah. They can yeah. absolutely go to the region, which, uh, by the way, a good point in time to address that quickly like this is something that Ubisoft did for us uh, which we couldn't do they basically just adapted their placeholder regions so the AI could understand them and go there and actually settle and because the AI they, they coded is it is actually kind of smart it is able to understand the game which without you having to explain it uh, so, if you add a new production chain into the game, the AI can just use that. Because it understands that there is a new production chain and it understands how many buildings it needs to build off that. Um, With limitations, yeah. but yeah. With a few limitations, yes, but in general, it can do so. Which is really nice to see. I know uh, the gameplay AI isn't really that good, especially like in terms of diplomacy. To be fair, it's pretty shit about the way the AI just gets the game out of the box. It's really nice to see and it's really a pleasure for modders to work with. Um, yeah, and well, as I said, Ubisoft adapted it so we could add more regions and the AI would be able to use them. Uh, so, in that sense, thank you to Minds for doing that. Um, credit where credit is due. Um, I now have grapes from down here. Let's do a trade route and get grapes going over here. Is it? It's, it's Dorothy, right? It is. Yeah. I think those were all the questions. I think. But so. about, I think you. By the way, you misunderstood me. I, I, I thought we would, uh, what, the street food, but now you're uh, actually uh, building in the old world. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I saw. 
Uh, no, I was really okay. <laughs> no. I just it's wanted okay. to focus on investors <laughs> quickly. I got distracted. Sorry. Um, let's upgrade and then we'll go back to Asia and take a look at one of the big new features that we've been doing for the past half year. Uh, yeah, he's not. He's mad at us. He can be mad at us. We are now gonna be making some space down here. Um, On what are we working right now in this mod? Well, not now, but the last half a year. It's this. This is street food. And it's honestly one of the coolest ideas that were ever... Well, people ever had for this mod. I think it was uh, JJE who came up with this uh, at first. And then we talked to some Chinese guys on the mo modding Discord. And... Honestly, the amount of input we've gotten was just baffling. And so we decided to basically just do our own restaurant system in 1800. It works a little differently. It's a little different take. It also has a little different purpose, but it's using basically the same kind of rules as the restaurants are. As you can see, it has recipes. Uh, we have four one in this actually. We have uh, vegetable tempura, uh, nigiri sushi. We have hand pulled beef noodles and takoyaki. Um, and by the way, we had some Reddit comments say that this doesn't really look like takoyaki. No, it doesn't. It's the best the AI gave us and we kind of revisited that. It's not yet in there. Just to be clear on that. we If something is subpar, we probably gonna address this sometime down the line. But yeah, um, at first we have vegetable tempura, we have potatoes, red peppers, fish oil and flour that we need. So none of the goods come from this region. It's a really, really big challenge to get all this in. And we will do that in a minute. As you can see, street food has abysmal range. Um, that's is also the range where they will buff like residences. So they don't have a warehouse range and a residence range. They just have one range in which they influence buildings and where they can get uh, their things from. So let's demolish some Nongmins, place a warehouse down here. And we have a noodle stand that's gonna be producing vegetable tempura for us in a minute. Um, I think we can also go for a dessert stand. Does that make sense? There uh, should be a, a recipe for every stand that can be yes. produced, but as you mentioned, it's it's hard in the beginning because uh, you need to import a lot of the goods. Yeah, it's basically complexity times 100. Absolutely. We, we didn't hold back on this when it came to complexity. Um, this was kind of the point. It is something that's gonna be optional. You can use it to an extent that you want. If you really wanna optimize, you're gonna have a fun time doing so. so this was created for people that just like uh, to optimize things in their game. Uh, that last like to play and puzzle with things. And I hope we have... Uh, th you, you guys will have fun with this. Um, so, while we at it, what does this thing actually need? We need fish, Floor tallow. We need uh, flour, sugar, soy, and potatoes. And we need potatoes, flour, and fish oil and red peppers. So let's go to the old world and uh, basically just produce a few th things that we can then bring over. Uh, there we have grain on the island. We, we have some sp free space over here. We also have some over here. Might we just fill space over here with floor and stuff? It would be pretty good of a decision, I think. And while you're doing that, I'll uh, answer Peter Tabulas his question about how many languages this mod will be created and can you directly start in Asia? Um, the language thing, we... You can... Oh, well, the mod will be in... Uh, in all the languages, but those will be translated with uh, an automatic translator. Uh, the main languages will be translated by somebody of us or maybe somebody from the community uh, yeah. to have a, a better translation compared to uh, an auto-translation. But 
we have the intention to actually make the mod available in the language of everybody. So, uh, well, that's the intention. Let's see how many people will jump in to actually make it that the translation is, uh, is actually really good and not just an auto-translated uh, one. Uh, but that's the, uh, that's the intention. And yeah. your second question about can you start in the Eastern Atoll? I presume you mean take it as your started region, like in like they uh, they announced in uh, 117. Uh, you can't. You only can uh, yeah go to the Eastern Atoll uh, like in a normal uh, region uh, in in Anno 1800 um, by an actual. Uh, process in the game and the process is reaching one investor and then uh, the Eastern Atoll uh, will be available to you. Yes. So th those are the answers to those two questions and then there is a, a really big one. Oh, it's uh, it's somebody praising your hard work, Toba. Oh my. I just read that comment like on okay. my second monitor. Man, thank you. Honestly, just thank you. That's all I can say. Uh, it's nice to see a project like this come to actual fruition and to a stage where you could consider it like presentable at least. So yeah, thanks for being here, I guess watching me do all this thing even though you might have to wait some time before you can actually play it um, because there's still a lot of work to do um, you know what we're gonna do is we're just gonna build some sugarcane anyway and import that over so if I say that if we want to have uh, 